Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sports Central. Today, we're going to be going over my MLB trade deadline winners and losers. So the MLB trade deadline was yesterday, and there were some big trades made yesterday and also in the days leading up to the trade deadline. So uh, diving right in, getting into my winners, the first winner is the Texas Rangers. So the Rangers had a great tra trade deadline. They are currently tied with the Astros for first place in the AL West. And the Rangers, they boosted their team in a big way. Their offense had already been one of baseball's best. They have scored the most runs of any team in baseball. So they went out and boosted their pitching staff, trading for Max Scherzer and Jordan Montgomery. The Scherzer trade was fantastic because the Rangers are going to get Scherzer for a year and a half as he opted into his player option for next year. And the Mets are paying a good chunk of his salary for this year. Plus, the Rangers only gave up Luis Angel Acuna. Now, he is a great prospect, but he's a middle infield prospect. And the Rangers have the middle infield walk down at second base and shortstop with Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon for the foreseeable future. And they also traded for Jordan Montgomery, and he isn't Max Scherzer, but he's still a very solid middle-of-the-rotation pitcher who's going to eat innings. So the Rangers' rotation looks really good moving forward, and they also uh, boosted their bullpen by trading for Walter Chapman at the end of June and also trading for Chris Stratton. So I love the moves the Rangers made this trade deadline, uh, this trade deadline and I think they're in a great position to make a deep playoff run. Next winner is the Angels. So the Angels ended up being aggressive buyers after saying they wouldn't trade Otani. And that is extremely smart for the Angels because I don't think they're going to end up re-signing Otani. So why not go all in this year? And that is exactly what the Angels did. They traded for Lucas Giolito, uh, Renato Lopez, CJ Crone, and Randall Grichuk. Now, the, the Angels have also won 10 of the last 15 games and adding some good players at the trade that won. Plus, they're going to get Mike Trout, uh, Logan Hoppy, and Anthony Rondon back in a few weeks. That puts them in a great spot to make the playoffs as they currently sit four games out of a wild card spot and six games out of first place in the American League West. So the Angels, a really, really good trade deadline, definitely making a big playoff push, and I would like to see them get into the playoffs after all the moves they've made, but they're another big winner. Next winner is the Mets. So we didn't expect the Mets to be sellers, but they're in the middle of a disappointing season. They're currently 50 and 56. But the Mets, they did a great job selling. They traded away Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, David Robertson and Mark Hanna, and ended up with several uh, good prospects and two top 100 prospects in Luis Angel Cunha, who I mentioned a second ago, and also Drew Gilbert. So the Mets, they've set themselves up for the future, getting some promising young pieces in return. And our final winner is NL Chaos. So the NL is going to be complete chaos down the stretch of the season because only five teams were sellers at the National League, those five teams being the Mets, Cardinals, Rockies, Pirates, and Nationals. So the NL is going to be very chaotic with 10 teams fighting for 6 playoff spots. And also the Central and West Division races are separated by less than 3 games at the time of recording this video. So the NL playoff race, both the divisional races and the wildcard races are going to be very chaotic down the stretch. And definitely very entertaining and something to watch. Moving to the losers, the first loser is the Reds. So the Reds, they currently sit atop the NL Central with a 59-50 and 50 record, 1 game over the Brewers. Now, I said the Reds are losers but slight losers, because they they didn't need to make major moves because they're still uh, probably at least a year away from contending in the NL, and I also just needed someone else to put into this category. But the Reds, they needed starting pitching in the worst possible way, because their rotation ranks 27th in the league in terms of ERA, and the Reds did nothing to address the rotation. They will be getting Nick Wadolo and Hunter Green back from injury, but both those players are so young, and I really don't think it would have hurt the Reds to go get a solid, experienced, middle-of-the-rotation starter for a pretty cheap price. So the Reds, they are losers, but very slight losers. Next loser is the Minnesota Twins. So they really did not do much at the trade deadline at all. They made one trade, and that was trading Jorge Lopez for Dylan Floro. So the Twins, they really weren't that active. They added nothing to an offense, which hasn't been great this season. And the reason I think this is a big deal for the Twins not doing much is because uh, all the other teams in their division aren't really going to be all that good because the only other team that's competitive with them right now is the Guardians and they were sellers. So the Twins are most likely going to win the AL Central and they have a team right now that is probably going to knock down the wild card round. So the Twins did not make moves and that ends up has them ending up as a loser of the trade deadline. And I saved the best for last. The biggest loser of all is the Yankees. So the question was for the Yankees it going into the deadline was would they be buyers? Would they be sellers? The Yankees ended up doing essentially nothing. They made one trade that was trading for reliever Kenyon Middleton for a minor league pitcher. The Yankees didn't need a reliever, and if the Yankees were going to make trades, they needed a left fielder, a position they have needed for a while. And I think the Yankees should have sold at the deadline because they had some players to sell, and unless they were going to make some huge moves, 
at the trade deadline for true difference makers, this team is not going to make the playoffs. So the Yankees, they missed a big opportunity to boost their farm system and get good prospects back in return for some players like Harrison Bader, Weber Torres, Isaiah Connor Fleffa, Wandy Peralta, and others. And another reason I think the Yankees should have sold is because they've got a lot of decent prospects sitting just rotting away in the minors, and I would really like to see them give some of their young players a chance and just see what they have for the future. So the Yankees opted to keep aging players who really aren't that great, and the Yankees are massive losers. And being a Yankee fan, if you guys would like to see my full thoughts, a more in-depth version of this, let me know in the comments, and I will definitely be sure to make a video on that. But those are my winners and losers of the MLB trade deadline. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn the notifications so you don't miss any videos. I do my best to post as often as possible. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree with my winners and losers, if you disagree, if you think I included somebody that shouldn't be on here, if I missed somebody. And also, let me know if you want to see that video of the more in-depth version of my thoughts on what the Yankees terribly messed up at the trade deadline. But, yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn notifications. I do my best to post as often as possible, and I will see you in the next video.